Hi, uh, my name is Jerry Luke, and uh, normally you hear me on Sports Insight on WHCR FM in New York, 90.3, the voice of Harlem. Uh, the number to call is uh, 1212-650-6903, but I urge you not to call it. If, you, if you're watching this video at about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm on Fridays, Eastern Standard Time, between 2 and 3.30 p.m., preferably if you're going to call, call sometime between 2.15 and 2.45. Um, this is uh, this is kind of an experiment. I'm very happy that you're you're watching this thing, um, and uh, let's proceed. Um, sports Insight likes to give you the uh, little bit of skinny on uh, what's going on in the sports world with a little bit of intelligence and some kind of humor. Sometimes we actually succeed. Most of the time, we just kind of move along and uh, try to get to the next story. Uh, at one point, we had. Um, a political guy, we, we, uh, we did some political stuff towards the end of the show, so we never know what's going to happen. This is kind of a mix. So let's begin. Um, and uh, part, of, uh, part of the deal is, ah, uh, you'll find out what the deal is, all right. One of, the, one of the articles that I was going to get into today was the subway system. And it's ironic that uh, I'm looking at the, the front page of the Daily News today, and de Blasio had some issue with uh, the train being late. Woohoo! The train being late. That never happens in New York, okay? Uh, what I would recommend for, Mr. for Mayor de Blasio is to, there's some kind of app I think you can get from the MTA, and you look at the damn app and you know which trains are on time and which are not. And the same thing happened to me Monday, this past Monday. Today is the 6th. Monday would have been the 4th. So I'm trying to get to the beach after coming from a friend's house in Brooklyn. I was on the F train, and I was going to make the change at, um, at uh, J Street Borough Hall when there was an announcement that nothing is moving. And it's now about 4 o'clock. No, it's, it's after 4 o'clock. It's, it's about 6 o'clock. I figured at best I would have had an hour at the beach at Rockaway, which I enjoy doing. And um, I timed it right. Well, I timed it right. Nothing came. And I realized, and, and I, can, you, can you imagine standing at J Street Borough Hall when the announcement comes on and says, okay, a train just pulled into Chamber Street and it'll be here shortly. Really? Okay. Um, so the bottom line is, uh, thanks for eating those nuts, uh, guys. Great. Just get comfortable. Um, uh, so I said, "The hell with it." So I went home and had a miserable evening because I, I couldn't I couldn't uh, get that train to um, to Rockaway. But that's not what I really wanted to talk about. What I wanted to talk about was was the heat or not the heat was the air conditioning in the train. For some reason, the MTA has decided that the best um, temperature for overall comfort for every person in the city of New York, all 10 million of them, is something around the Arctic Circle. So it, you could be sitting on a bus um, going, you could be sitting on the number seven going up uh, uh, Amsterdam Avenue. It is like 35 degrees outside. It's 25 degrees inside. Do you have, does anybody have any, 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 uh, any idea or any thought that there are customers in the bus and it's already freezing outside, maybe they'd like to be warm when they come in the bus. This is just a concept. Anyway, so lots of things wrong with the MTA. I, all, all, overall, I'm actually happy with it. You can make a trip um, from um, Upper Manhattan, 207th Street, to Rockaway, to Rockaway. Actually, if you want to go to Rockaway Park, you have to, you have to uh, um, change at Broad Channel. But you can do that for two, was it 275 now? I don't know. I'm a senior. I ever get the pass, the monthly pass. I don't know. That's amazing. Um, so I'm I'm really tired of getting frozen. Right now we're in a period where there's a changeover, and um, it's not that cold in the trains yet, but it will be. There are times when I take the train at two, three o'clock in the morning after a music gig. You take the D train or the A train, and you freeze your butt off. I mean, and I, I, I like the fact that um, that you can get to where you're going 
but have a little compassion for the people that are riding the trains. All right, uh, Leo's getting bored, so I got to continue. So that was my first. That was my first bit. The other bit was the Pacquiao fight. What is going on there? At first, I thought it was. Um, I th first I thought Pacquiao lost. It was some kind of conspiracy, and uh, and uh, he had to make a good showing, and he should have like should, he should have come out fighting for the first six rounds. I had all these theories about why Pacquiao lost, and uh, comes the next day or a day or two later, no, he had a shoulder injury. Come on, man, you had a I gotta say this right, a shoulder injury, really, and now now everybody's like. Uh, uh, Covering their butt. Well, one person said uh, we 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 checked that box. Yes, even though we thought it was no, because we thought everybody knew that since he was that since he's a fighter, um, there could be a chance for him to get a shot. I'm not even giving you the excuse correctly, but it was excuse after excuse after excuse. If the guy is hurt, stop the damn fight. That's it. There's no other recourse. And now, now he's screwed because he committed perjury. And that's a bad thing. Now, there's some other clowns who want their money back because of uh, they paid 100 bucks and they thought they didn't get a good fight, yada, yada. That's not the issue. The issue is the guy committed perjury. And uh, that's a sad thing. Um, I'm not a f I am not a fan of Mayweather because I'm just not a fan of people who are who are winners and who are loud and obnoxious. I like people who win, who have a little bit of humility, and then they, you know, they they, they shake their hands, say thank you, and they walk off the stage. And you got a lot of people, that, uh, Mayweather isn't the only one, all this dancing in the end zones after you caught a pass, you caught a pass. That's all you did, you caught a pass, it's six points. Walk away, enjoy the moment. Um, we got salsa dancing in New York, and I like Victor Cruz. I like all those guys, but give give it a rest. Getting back to Mayweather, he's a good fighter. You can't take anything away from him. Oh, and by the way, for in some curious way, all of a sudden he's saying he wants to fight Pacquiao again in a year. <laughs> this is from not wanting to fight him at all because he claimed that he was he was on steroids or whatever. So this is kind of an interesting turnaround for Mayweather. May, May, Mayweather doesn't want to have his um, his uh, record soiled by 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 maybe hurting somebody who had an injury. I just Mayweather amazes me. Anyway, good fighter, great footwork. I don't like. I I I think everybody wants to see two guys pound the crap out of each other. He just doesn't want to get hit in the head. I don't blame him. You know, in, in, in 10 years, he's going to be walking around with no marbles. And he doesn't want to. So I have, you know, I, I'm not going to do it here now, but on the show we go through all, all sorts of stuff about um, uh, uh, the injuries that are befalling football players, dementia, and uh, all sorts of other wonderful stuff that, that happens to football players after their careers. So I, and, and how many, how many, I think there was recently a boxer who died, who died... Um, in the throes of dementia, he didn't even know. He didn't even know he was dying. It's a very sad thing. All right, so that's number two. What else do we got? How much time do we have left? By the way, oh, how are we doing? We got two minutes. Oh man, I can I can go nuts. Okay, um, <laughs> are you change your mind? <laughs> All right, we got about one minute. Uh, let's talk about the Mets. Um, I I always try to not talk about the Mets because I'm a fan, and once I start talking about the Mets, I go nuts. And uh, and uh, if, unless you're unless you you know been living underwater in a cave, they won eleven in a row. Since they won eleven in a row, they're two and seven or three and seven. Uh, a couple of guys got hurt in one game. A catcher and a pitcher both got broken arms. It's just an amazing thing. Amazing things happen out in Flushing. Um, so I think fans are just grateful that um, some really good things happened. They got some good ball players. They're missing some. They're missing a. They're missing like a, like a Giancarlo Stanton. They're missing, they're missing the stud like that. If they had it, they'd be in good shape, but you never know. They won last night. Since this is the sixth, they won last night. Um, they won uh, three to one, three to two. And, um, uh, oh God, what, what was the pitcher? 
uh, uh, Colón, Colón. Uh, Bartolo Colón uh, won his fifth, and um, I'm very happy for him. Um, I don't think anybody realizes, but last year he was fantastic as well. Uh, he had a terrific ERA, but nobody got him any runs. This year he's already five and run. People got him runs. All right. That's not the issue. That's not what I'm talking about. I want to talk about Ligaris. And I want to talk something that, that, is, that is, I don't know, uh, um, I, 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 there's a word that, I, that comes to mind, but I don't want to use it. It's too harsh. You know the guy has very little command of the English language. Okay. So you interview him after um, a game. And he can basically say a couple of things. Yeah, I got a hit. I feel good. I help the team. All right. And I'm tired of seeing that kind of an interview. Why don't you have a guy who speaks Spanish as part of the, your broadcast team, as part of SNY, interview him in Spanish and place the subtitles of the interview underneath him? I eat at a Thai place where they, where they crank up all sorts of sports for me, and they also crank up um, a running uh, interpretation of what's going on on the screen. You can read what's going on on the screen. It doesn't it doesn't disturb any other any other the uh, the people who eat there, and um, I get to hear what's going on. I would like to hear what Lag what Juan Lagares has to say, and I mean you got a lot of people go to foreign films. They read subtitles. You know a lot of, a lot of Met fans actually can read subtitles, and those people who can't read subtitles will have to learn how to read English on a screen. What the hell is on with that? So anyway, um, I'd like to see that happen. And you get a really good insight into this, you know, this fellow's mind. He's a terrific fielder. He's made some catches that are unbelievable, and I'd like to find out a little bit more about him. Um, I think we're about at the end here. Um, uh, what else? Is there anything else I can talk about? Oh, uh, we want to end it? Uh, Leo's getting tired. So, we're going to end it. My name is Jerry Luke. We do a radio show every Friday between the hours of 2 and 3.30 on WHCR FM in New York, 90.3, The Voice of Harlem. Uh, number to call is 1212-650-6903. Uh, please call if you feel uh, the need. Do not call after watching this video if you're watching it at 3 o'clock in the morning, okay? And uh, it's, uh, that's about it. So, so thank you. And I hope to hear from you soon.